Hey guys, Mark Walters here from BigFanboy.com to do a quick review of the new movie Barbarian, which opens Friday, September 9th. This comes from writer-director Zach Kreger, who is previously known for his work on The Whitest Kids You Know and the theatrical film Miss March, which came out in 2009. In fact, Barbarian is his first theatrical release since Miss March, but don't hold his past work up to what you can expect from Barbarian. This is a very, very different type of project for him. Definitely what you would consider a horror movie. But what I found most interesting about Barbarian is that the film you see is very different from the film you might expect to see based on the trailers for this movie. Uh, the production company is doing a really good job of kind of keeping a lot of the movie secrets secret. And let me tell you something, I'm not going to spoil it for you either because I don't want you to go in there knowing what to expect. I want you to be as surprised as I was when I saw the movie. But I will tell you a few key elements that you can expect that will kind of give you an idea of what you should be thinking as you go in to see this. First of all, Barbarian is actually three separate segments of a film that all sort of come together in the final act. So what you're seeing is what is kind of like three separate stories, but all involving this one very specific location. The main crux of the film revolves around Tess, who is played by Georgina Campbell, a young woman who is checking into an Airbnb on a rainy night in Detroit. She's got a big job interview the following day and she wants to get a good night's sleep. When she gets to the house, it's raining outside. She finds there's no key in the lockbox. She, the door is locked, she can't get in. She tries calling, she can't get anybody on the phone. Eventually she realizes there's somebody in the house. So she knocks on the door and a guy answers, a guy named Keith, who is played by Bill Skarsgård of It and It Chapter Two fame. And Keith basically says he was renting the house from an Airbnb uh, website, a different site than what she used. So it seems like it's just an honest mistake. It was a double booking. They don't know what to do. Now, she doesn't really have anywhere else to go. There's no hotels that she can check into that night on such short notice. So Keith offers to her, if you want to stay here, you can stay here. And then we'll figure all of this out, you know, either later tonight or tomorrow morning. And basically what I'm telling you is what you see in the trailers. But of course, this being a horror movie, it doesn't just end there. You know, creepy things start to happen. She starts to hear or notice certain things that are happening in and around this house. And very quickly, it starts to seem as if things are not what they appear to be. What was most interesting to me is that I expected this movie was going to be one of those, you go in the house, you stay in the house, and you're there the entire time. Not the case. You actually go away from the house several times throughout the movie. As I said, it's comprised of three different segments. So you'll see a story that it starts with, a middle story, a final story, and then everything kind of gels together in the final act. But there's a lot of segments of the movie where you actually go away from the house. So it kind of gives you the sense of, I guess, a bigger world outside of it and not just being stuck in one location. Uh, this is a really interesting movie. This is a very interesting film. It's very dark, very scary at times. And yes, it is rather disgusting at times as well. If you are a, the type of person that's kind of queasy in horror movies, you might want to be careful when you go into this one because there's some stuff in here that is really, really, really unnerving. Um, but if you like horror movies, especially horror movies that kind of subvert your expectations, I think you're going to enjoy Barbarian. One thing I think they've done a really great job of is the trailers sort of misleading the audience on what kind of movie they can expect this to be. By watching the trailers, you might go into this thinking it's a very specific type of story, and you'd be wrong, because there's things that happen in this movie that the trailers don't even mildly hint at. Um, and there's also things that happen in this movie that take place over a different sort of linear way of storytelling. Like you don't always stay in the present, you know, you kind of skip ahead at one point and then at one point you kind of go back into the past. So, you know, it tells you, and that's not to say this is a time travel movie. That's not what I mean. I mean that there are elements of the story that take place over different time periods. And I found that interesting as well. Um, one of the things that I think this movie is definitely going to do is probably make people leery of staying in Airbnbs. 
And uh, it's funny because I was actually talking to some friends. We went to a film festival a couple of years ago. We stayed in an Airbnb and there was a certain door in this Airbnb that was locked. We couldn't get into that part of the house and we were all sort of curious, what is in that part of the house? And after seeing this movie, I am so glad we did not open that door. I don't wanna know what was in that part of the house. It's none of my business. Uh, one of the other main featured actors in this film is Justin Long who plays uh, an actor that is uh, getting ready to have a very popular sitcom on the air. Something happens and uh, his world kind of gets turned upside down. But again, without getting into some major spoilers, I can't tell you exactly how he fits into the story, only to say that his segment is kind of the middle segment of the movie and that he does have a very specific connection to the house that Tess and Keith are staying in in the first section of the movie. This is one of those films that like, I wish so badly I could talk at specific detail about. It's one of those films that I think you're going to really enjoy talking to your friends about if they've had a chance to see it and see what their thoughts are on it. There's a lot of theories that you could, you know, come up with for this film. And it is one of those films that I think it asks a lot of questions, but it doesn't go out of its way to answer all of those questions. And I know sometimes people can be frustrated with that because they see a movie like this and they're like, I wanna know how this got to this point. I wanna know why this person did this. I wanna know how all these things came about. And the movie doesn't necessarily tell you that or doesn't feed that to you. There's a lot of it that you kind of have to just make your own assumptions about. But let's face it, sometimes there's nothing more scary than what you can come up with in your own mind. A um, couple of things that you may want to be on the lookout for, and again, I'm treading very carefully because I don't want to spoil anything, but um, there, are <laughs> there are certain visuals that will probably be burned into your memory after you watch this film. Uh, if you're sensitive about mm, babies, and nursing and things like that, you may want to prepare yourself to be really uncomfortable. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed this film a lot. I don't know if it's the kind of movie that I would necessarily recommend to a lot of my friends, but if you are a horror movie fan and you're looking for something that's sort of new and different and isn't just another slasher movie, Barbarian is very, very interesting. It feels very much like a film festival darling. And I was most excited about the fact that it was a movie that the whole time I was watching it, I was on the edge of my seat. The scares really got to me. It was very effective. And I never really felt like I knew exactly what was coming next. It surprised me on many, many levels. So while I wouldn't say it's a perfect film, I wouldn't say it's one of my favorite horror movies. It's one of the most interesting horror movies I've seen in quite a while. Barbarian opens up Friday, September 9th. It is incredibly violent, it is incredibly disturbing, and at times very gory. So prepare yourself. If that sort of thing bothers you, you want to be ready when you're going into it. Uh, but I think you're going to find it very interesting. I want to hear your thoughts down below. If you get a chance to see this movie and you have theories about certain things, just make sure that you introduce your comments with the word spoiler warning, just in case someone is reading it that hasn't seen the movie yet. And please don't let anybody spoil it for you before you see it, because I think you're really going to enjoy some of the surprises that take place in this. Barbarian is rated R, opens up September 9th. This has been Mark Walters with BigFanboy.com. Check it out. Let me know what you think. Are you new to BigFanboy.com? If so, we're the longest running movie news and review website based in Dallas, Texas. Please give us a follow on social media. All of our handles are at BigFanboy, all one word, B-I-G-F-A-N-B-O-Y. Hope to see you there.